I think it, it always it always picks the the the, the, the as we go live. It's the, and and usually it, there's it's there's people sitting there going like you know. <laughs> so to, welcome so to, everybody. So Tim, we were accused we were accused last week of having too many bold men on the show. We that we were accused. We had one comment that there was way too much shiny heads. So so Thomas and I are tokens. <laughs> and Eric, I don't want to be involved. I don't want to be involved anymore. <laughs> uh, we're, we're even. Oh, Does it boy. work? Does it go with the no? I, I think it suits you. I think yeah, you should. I, I, would, I would never know. Yeah, you never, you never know. Do you think I could pull it off for the whole, uh, the whole restream? Turn? I, I think you should try it. <laughs> See if anyone makes any comments. Uh, Eric, <laughs> Eric, what you should what you should get, I've got a uh, a friend who owns a company called Mullet on the Go, and they have <laughs> mullet wigs. <laughs> what in the world does mullet on the go do? Is that like a quick you you need a quick mullet? They've got they've got like can, can anybody find it and put it up on the screen? Because we oh my we, god mullet on they're, mullet on the go. Mullet on the go. They're gonna love me. I'll pull it up. For all right your now. quick mullet needs, have they got like a drive-through? <laughs> <laughs> in desperate need of mullet emergency <laughs> mullet needed oh my god holy smokes that All is right, hilarious it's, it's, no but really coming. what is what is mullet on the go <laughs> i gotta know I, oh man. what so is one, the market it's coming <laughs> I'm, it's uh it's wigs it's it's mullet it's, wigs of all sorts mullet wigs because you know you never know when you have a good 80s party. It's like Nick Neighbor. And you, need a, and you need a mullet. You know what I would do? If I was going to be heading through the South, particularly the rural South, to disguise myself, I'd get a mullet wig. I have to say, his, your, friend's, your, friend's website is, your friend's website is absolutely brilliant. Just, it's just uh, I don't know. So you, so you can have a choice of some of these. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, if I was looking to blend in, that's what I would do. Oh yeah, Get myself a mullet, Absolutely. a mullet wig. <laughs> that is hilarious. I, do, do you like the Do you like the the wig that's called America? And that is <laughs> that, that is the one that Lenwood is referring to right now. Yeah, right now it's right yeah. there. That's right the one. There. Yes. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. You know. Sorry for oh, hijacking no. your your uh, your restream, Tim. This is I know that's no. Not, that's, I think yeah. it's you know it's important that we we discuss these things because it was a comment that was left <laughs> last week that there was too much too much skin. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh boy! That's wow. Christian. Christian. Thank yeah. You. Hi, Christian. Thanks for uh, joining us. Bonjour. Um, Oh yeah, God. bonjour, ça va. Bonjour. So, um, um, do you want to introduce yourself, Eric? Just we, just we, uh, Eric. <laughs> yeah, oh, by the way, I, I nearly forgot. You're the award-winning Eric Doyle, aren't you? Yes. Well, I, I didn't want to. Yeah. I didn't want to make a big deal about it, Tim. I just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I just let it, he, let it slide. As he pulls past. up his award, I, I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I'd like to thank my mother and my father <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, so yeah, what did you, you win well. the award for, Eric? Because we were talking uh, about this last week, weren't we? We, we said, so that was, yeah, get people it, to vote for you. It was uh, the account based engagement summit 2021 yep. had a bunch of uh, sectors for practitioners, managers, directors, and all of that. And I, I was in the winning class, luckily, for uh, account based executive uh, engagement uh, managers. Fantastic gold medal. I, oh yeah, indeed. So it was just an absolute honour and a pleasure to be involved in the process. And and it was nice to see you on there doing your doing your talk. Uh, we we all tuned in it, which w must have been what nine o'clock at night, something like that. Uh yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I recorded wonderful. it about three years ago, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> great to be there with you anyway. And and thanks for thanks for everything, guys. Thank you. Yeah, that no, was good. Good. The awesome. award winning. The award, yeah, it's got a ring to it, hasn't it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas, so I, do you want to introduce yourself? Well, I'm not award winning, but but I'm I'm a founder of Social Sales HQ and a very active partner with DLA Ignite. Lemwood. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, I am uh, the CEO, founder. Of, your only toes. 
Yeah, I know. I, I'm, not, I'm not paying attention to the uh, order here. The um, I'm the founder and CEO of Accelery. We are a partner of DLA Ignite here in the United States. Brandon. Hey, everybody. I am Brandon Lee. I'm the founder of Funnel Amplified and uh, partner with DLA as well in the United States. And Lenwood, I'm, I'm expecting you to come down to the south and bring your bullet. I, I can't wait to come down there. Uh, and I, I really want to come to Atlanta. But if I drive, I'm, I definitely am going to need that mullet. <laughs> that <is true. laughs> and, and, and Adam. Hi, I'm Adam. I'm Tim's business partner and co-founder of DLA Ignite. And a proud partner of Lenwood, Eric, Thomas and Brandon. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, uh, uh, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about the Gartner seminar that came out. Crikey! Yeah, Power 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 I don't know where to start. They they, they said so many good things. Where, where do you want to start? My goodness, there's uh, there's several good mic drops in there. So pick one, and <laughs> it'll be our just whole a, hour. Just as, an, just as a, an overarching piece, um, hmm. many of many of the the speakers. Um, so. I first tuned into Maria Bolden on a, a webinar, I think maybe tail end of last year. And for particularly um, her approach to, for me, Maria Bolden is like the Sarah Connor of modern sales. You know, the Terminator Sarah Connor doesn't mince her words. And as I put a response to your your piece today, Tim, which was a good kind of summary of, of some of the mic drop moments that Brandon was talking about, I think, and I know that uh, Thomas has said this before, and many of us have said this before, it's that kind of straight talking that cuts through the crap that we need to be getting to. I love it when Maria Bolden says things like, don't send your 2019 salespeople into a 2021, uh, 2021 firestorm. Hmm. That, that, you know, that, that is, we need to cut through the crap and on the, well, does this social selling really work? Does this, uh, you know, cut, yeah. we need to cut through all the crap here and get to the point that livelihoods, sustainability of organizations actually depends on proper, proper action here and that straight yeah. talking when she does it the hairs the hairs that are left on the back of my neck stand up <laughs> yeah uh, i agree okay yeah yeah <clears throat> it's, it's uh yeah it's really oh, good and uh, a special guest appearance it's, oh! it's my mother this is this is this is mrs hughes you, hello, you, Mrs. Hughes. You can see hello, the light. Hello, Mrs. Hughes. There you go. I've got better hair than him. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly have. <laughs> Excellent. She said, she, said, she said, if I come in, do I say anything? And I said, yeah, say what you like. So, <laughs> That's it. So, so there's my, mother. I mean, my Mike's mother came in the other day, so I thought I'd introduce you to mine. There you go. There's a theme. There's a theme. Hi. I like it. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. I need to get my mom to come visit. Yeah, totally. I think so. <laughs> you, you guys remember, I would have to set just... up all of this in front of my mother to get her. <laughs> like... I need. I need to get a private private investigator to try and find mine. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Are so, so, so important today. So one of the things one of the things that um, they talked about was about digital dexterity, oh. uh, and, and I agree with you, Eric. You know all this stuff about oh, is it is it social selling or not? What you know? Come on, guys, wake come up! Yeah, yeah. You know this is this is you know this is the second um, the second decade of the the, the 21st century. Come on, are we still making phone calls and and trying to get through to people? I mean, come on. Well, you know what what Eric said is so critical, and 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 I just went through this, Eric. Uh, Tim and I were talking about this. Um, I actually have. Um, well, we've got a few more than one client. We've got a few clients that we work with, and and potential potential opportunities that we're that we're working with, where we've had to call them out, Eric, and and actually tell them, listen, you know, you're gonna you they're they're talking about hiring or they're talking about building this and doing all these great things with their organization, and we say. You know, you're you're spending money on things that are so outdated and and ineffective that in a year from now, instead of gaining ground, you will have lost so much more ground. 
Yeah. Right. And that's what that webinar and, and the Gartner message really is. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Right. It, it, it's, it's just about stop, you know, putting all that pressure on the CEO or the CRO or whatever you're calling them is, is not going to get you anywhere. And hiring 20 new salespeople and giving them all, you know, um, Still sit and twiddle new, the thumbs. Yeah, yeah. New, new email scripts and new phone yeah. <laughs> These are these are up to date. These are current. They've got yeah. buzzwords in them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's so, over, yeah, it's so crazy. Right? It's, you know, it's but you know what it is. Yeah. I think that um, you know, God willing, we are there's people like starting to make the change from this sort of constant focus on um, automation and you know, pumping more emails out and the technology of digital transformation and turning to like the, the culture, like you've got to, you've got to get people with digital skills because we're in a digital first world and they need to have these digital skills in order to operate. You cannot continue to operate in an analog manner with these analog tools. When we just went through this period where the whole digital story accelerated, Right. That, that is just completely illogical. And if people would just take a beat and think about it, they would realize that. I mean, but, people, but are people before, taking that beat. Well, that, good that, question. If they watch this, if they watch this webinar, yeah. they should be. But, but I, I think that there's a there's an awful lot of uh, us and organizations like us that are saying this is what the future looks like. This is your window of opportunity. No one else is doing this. You can do this and you can put clear water between yourself and the competitors. And they say, that's absolutely fantastic. And we'll do that as soon as we've finished implementing this cold calling strategy. <laughs> and, and we've changed that. I mean, Tim, Tim and I uh, were working with a client and they saw the biggest shift that they were going through at that particular moment. This is the tail end of last year. The biggest shift was moving from one email marketing platform, which was, to quote their head of marketing, not fit for purpose, moving from that to one that was fit for purpose. <laughs> and Tim and I just kind of went, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're missing the point. This is, this is like someone with diabetes moving from chocolate cake to, to you know, pumpkin pie. It doesn't solve the fundamental challenge that you've got, that what you're doing is not generating the results that you want. And I think that, that there's an awful lot of people going back into their safe zone. And I think that uh, that we've, for the last year, we've had people sitting on their hands saying, when COVID is over and things go back to normal, and now obviously things clearly are not going to go back to normal, certainly not any time for the foreseeable future, by which I'm talking not months, but potentially years. But I still think that we're in a situation where many people are defaulting back to those old things. Yeah. Well, we'll do more campaigns. We'll do more of this. We'll do more of that. That isn't working. But the fact remains that it's something that they know how to do. You know, what we're doing is we're saying, actually, you've, you, you know, you've got, you're going to go on a spacewalk. There's nothing here for support. This is something entirely new and very different from what you've done before. And it requires bravery and a lot of hard work. And people are scared. Yeah. That's and it's so much too. easier to give the directive to your sales manager or your CSO or even your marketing manager. <laughs> you need to go digital. I just watched this webinar and I'm going to send it to you. And you guys go digital. Can you get that done? I, I get so many salespeople coming to me saying, my sales manager says I need to read your stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like that's going to make a big difference to the yeah. pipeline and what's going on. You know, it's like so. I went so I went to the library and um, and I read a book on judo, and now I'm going to go and get a gold medal at the Olympics. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think that the 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 Gartner um, webinar was brilliant because what it did was it kicked a lot of silt up. You know, it, 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 it showed people that things have changed. But I think fundamentally the shortcoming with that kind of webinar is that it tells you, you you can't send salespeople from 2019 to do business in uh, 2021. And everyone says, yeah, absolutely. But nobody t is telling them actually what they should do. They're saying this doesn't work. This doesn't work. The, 
the the environment has changed the old strategies don't work anymore but until you say to somebody and a new strategy could be this actually these people are lost because they all they know is that what they've done hasn't worked yeah yeah absolutely can we can, is it possible just to go back just just really quickly it resonates kevin's comment there about his yeah. two calls this morning can we just yes. pull that back up to him so mm. So we hear this all the time, right? So uh, what you just said there, my, my sales leader, my sales manager said I had to read your blog or whatever it might be. So two sales calls this morning to BD salespeople. I know where it's going and I've said X to my boss, but they are old school, right? Maria, uh, the, the, the Gartner people, there's a statement in there that's just such a body blow. I mean, it, it's got bold and written all over it. Let people leave the company if they're not willing to adjust and realize that they need digital skills to pursue in this new terrain. Experience does not count. Willingness, willingness to adapt and be coached and be bold is required. Digital dexterity and learning agility is what's needed, right? So that is a body blow. Let them go. Yeah. You know, we're moving to digital, guys, and you're going to have to be expert at social to do what you did before. You don't have to like that. Yeah. You can say it's not for me, but you have to move on and leave them behind. My worry is, in relation to what Kevin says, is what if those blockers are actually up here? Yeah, yeah. that's 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 what I I actually think that's what the issue is. Is that yeah. you, you've got the you've got the the rank and file, the people who are having to execute are like, hello, give us the stuff, you know, give give me give something, us, yeah, I need something that I can use in this battle that will work. <laughs> I, I have a guys i have a customer right now that's in that exact same boat that um you know the 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 mid-tier levels are seeing this going we desperately need this and up above it's it's more of um you know it's putting on the brakes it's fear it's how do we know it's going to work and the question is well is anything you're doing right now working i mean it's yeah. it's it's the what's what what's working right now or what's happening right now failure okay what are you doing different to try and solve it nothing okay so here's our solution here's our case studies here's what we do yeah but what if it doesn't work like it, it's hard for me to, to say well, like what do you have to lose at this point it's <laughs> yeah uh, everything else isn't working so right but, uh, is, is it, Kevin said that one of the BD people has already handed his notice in. I mean, you know, if, if an organization isn't going to go digital and social, they're, they're not going to get the talent. No. I, I think yeah. what's really interesting is that, that Eric has had a degree of traction working with uh, smaller businesses, by which I mean like 100 staff rather than two staff, uh, smaller businesses, getting them to completely remap how they envisage taking themselves to market, how they recruit, how they market, uh, because they're small enough to be agile. Right. But at the enterprise yep. level, uh, right. organizations think we're invulnerable. You know, we, we can't do this. We're a Leviathan. We can't change direction. And we have all of these processes and all of these staff and all of this this tech in place which is helping us to, to continue to do these things. And, and they're, they're like Kodak was, you know, we are too big to fail. Oh dear, we've failed. Yep, and actually right. the, the transition, because it takes so long to change how large organizations work, if they don't start changing now, they'll be gone within the decade, won't they? Yeah, yeah. Or do sooner. You think, do, you, do you think that it's, um, <clears throat> do you think that it's it's that they, that they are, not agile or simply that they're not close enough to the ramifications right in other words there if it, it, you know when you're in, in, in an enterprise you like get this direct deposit that goes into your account you go into work every day yep. you do your thing and so you just keep you just think oh that check's just going to keep coming but when you're in a smaller organization you're much closer to the results you, you, yeah. you see like how what you're doing is impacting the outcome and so when the when the tap turns off you're much more like wait a minute <laughs> yeah whoa that tap is, is what leads to that money going into my account so uh, we need to do something. I, I don't know if that's it, though. I, I, I okay. it's a great point. It's a great point, Landwood. But I think the bigger point is, and I think we miss this sometimes too. Um, the the size of this change is so large and so big 
um, that it scares the bejesus out of the leadership. And rather than try and figure it out, uh, they'd rather avoid it altogether. You have to remember the, the organizational chart, you know, CEO, CSO, <laughs> CMO, um, sales managers, sales teams, customer service, da 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 procurement, human resource. That hasn't changed in 60 years. The sales process by which most people have been trained hasn't changed in that same 60 years. Yes, there's challenger sales. Yes, there's solution selling. But the actual processes and steps have not changed. You know, that sales funnel looks pretty much the same today as it did 10 years ago and 20 years ago. That's where your challenge is. So yeah, you yeah. are fundamentally, you know, one of my favorite terms in, in, in that Gartner, uh, uh, Gartner webinar and, and information was sales Sherpa, right? So instead of being a sales executive or a BDM or whatever term you're giving your salespeople, you become a sales Sherpa. And when you think about what a Sherpa is, the role and the definition and the job duties, and this is what's so fundamental, of the salesperson has radically changed. In fact, I'll go so far as to say we no longer need outside sales reps. Mm -hmm. We don't need them. <laughs> what, what we need now, what we need now is sales Sherpas and experienced digital customer experience people. That's I'm just, lo I'm just logging that's a, sales. That's, that's a great, um, that's, that's a great point. And I think then it actually, what Adam said is actually right. It is agility. The issue is agility because what we're getting to is basically um, the digital has disrupted, not just the business, the whole organizational structure, right? So it's got to get flatter um, and the, We've got to in, be enabling leaner. more people, leaner, enabling more people that are customer facing to engage with people in human to in human. In real time. Um, real time interaction, it, right? That is transformation. Because yeah. Gartner transformation. say at the end, they said, they said, what does the, the future of sales look like? And they actually said the sales team should be smaller. Hmm. Yeah. Now, now I, I don't know how many organizations out there are actually saying they need less salespeople. Yeah. Well, they're not or, because, or, or, because or. they're not they're not getting the the change in behavior, right? You can't shrink the sales team down until you get a team that changes behavior and becomes more productive, right? And and but it's just, it's just I mean that just raises so many other issues, right? Because there's just a fundamental understanding of how do you get more with less, right? Mm. Most people they don't understand that. It's like if you want more, you put you know it's like the whole email thing. Oh, you want more. You know, you got to send out more emails, right? So it's that same mindset, right? Good How do you point. get more with less? It's, it's just a fundamental lack of understanding about what we do. Social selling, how the platforms enable us, how enable you to be more productive. They just no understanding of that whatsoever. But, but do, you know but what do these people actually want to be productive? That's that's my question. <laughs> so so I, I've worked I've worked in an organization where every month I knew I was going to get paid at the end of the month. And some of the people that I worked with, you know, they know that there's churn in sales. They know that, you know, some people are going to be let go and some people are going to be employed and uh, I'm going to work in this company and then I'm going to move to this company and then I'm going to move to this company. And actually their view was, well, I'll just stick it out here for another six months until the, we get reached the end of the road and then I'll just go and interview for another company. And as long as I can live on my base salary, actually whether I sell anything is irrelevant or not. And actually, there's a lot of people in that space, you yeah. know, and, and and that's when you're earning a six figure salary. When you're up at the top of the business and you're earning a seven figure or an eight figure salary, as some of these people are, why on earth would you rock this boat? You know, if you're yeah. earning a million dollars a month. Actually, if you are able to stay another three months and kick that down, you'd never have to work again. And I think that a lot of organizations, large organizations are in that space. You know, I'll just hang on with my fingernails till the last possible minute, and then I'll parachute out a wealthy man, and I'll be living on my yacht. Job done. I think. I think to speak to very much to what uh, Gartner that that let the people go that can't convert or won't convert. To speak to that, I think um, uh, what I've experienced over the last year is that there are people who will rise to this. 
Mm. There are people who will get on board and rise to this. The, the, the growth mindset people, I'm all about this. Lots of people realize, managers realize, oh, oh, hold on a minute. I've got more visibility on anything I've ever had in the last 20 years. I, I, don't, I don't get responses like, you know, what are you up to these days, Tim? What have you been up to for the last week? Well, I've made some calls. I've got some really hot prospects. I'm really, really keen on this lead. It's super hot, and I think it's going to come off, but they'll be closing maybe towards the end of the month. Oh, excellent. That's, that's cool. How do I know any of that is real? How do I know any of that stuff in the CRM is real? When we, when we transfer the team to social, there is nowhere to hide. There is nowhere to hide, and some people are really comfortable with that. Some people are super uncomfortable with that. And it's the people who have been hiding behind the bullshit forecast, the crap, the weak stuff in CRM, the nonsense that's in there. Really? Really, John? It's 90%? It's 90% and it's July 31st? Really? Well... Are you driving okay. there to pick the contract up? No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> really, John? Really, Joanne? <laughs> yeah, amazing. Great points, great points. So when we talk uh, uh, about shout, shout out to, to Chris as as one of our um, one of our uh, customers. Hey Chris, and, um, and 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 he's and he's getting an ROI from social. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when uh, and, we talk and if you're about... watching this and you don't know, don't know, give you can connect yeah. to Chris. He'll tell you. Yeah, absolutely. So when we can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yes. yes. So when we talk about hiring what are you looking for now or what should you be looking for now by way of salespeople you might want to hire i think i think i think uh there's a there's an excellent again this this leads back to the gartner piece but looking out with the looking out with that traditional kind of well i need a salesperson so i'm going to go out to a search company and ask them to find a salesperson who currently works in this industry that understands this industry that's going to bring the skills that i need to come into this organization and then they come in they say they've got a little black book. It's got 20 names in it. No one's answered on the phone. So we, we just add another inefficient piece of mechanics into a process that's already broken. I like the whole idea of going out to find people that are going to be forward thinking, malleable, and able to operate in a new environment. A new, able to, willing and able to operate in that new environment. So it changes your selection criteria, right? Throws it out the window. There's out the window. No, no yeah. longer do I need someone who's got 10 years experience in this industry at nail and sales. I'm actually looking for a different animal. Totally different animal. Yeah, that's mm. not to say that your animals can't L be. Like a Dessa, for example. Like a Dessa. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, I think I think it all this comes back to the it, it takes bravery. I mean, quite honestly, I mean it takes some it takes some <laughs> fortitude, I think, at this point. And and it's um people are getting pushed and pushed and pushed to a point where maybe more of them are going to make the desperate decision, but those that make the decision now sooner, and this isn't just, you know, promoting what we do. It's, it's reality. We see it every single day that um, they've got, I mean, even just take, take a small group and go prove it, but they've got to, they've got to figure out how to get over that last hurdle of fear. Totally agree. So how does that change the role of the uh, customer support people? And does that add sales to their bailiwick or does that add customer service to the sales team's bailiwick? It's a loaded question, Mr. Ross, because I know you've got strong views on this. <laughs> It's all he's like it's like it's like setting himself up for this fight. Yeah, for the big mic drop. Yeah. For the Rick Mysterio around the neck. So, so Thomas, what do you think? I I have no opinion. You know, oh, that's interesting. It, it Thomas, next time just message one of us that question and then we can just I'll, I'll tee read, it up I'll for read you. It out. What's the fun with that? <laughs> So remind me, what was the question again, Thomas, before you answer it? So the, the question is, are we adding customer service and experience skills with salespeople? Or are we adding sales, digital sales skills with our customer service and experience people? Okay, answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you waiting well, for? Well, the answer is We're all waiting. Above, right? The, the answer <laughs> to, is all to, to, to give some context. For people out there watching is that 
Thomas has actually been dealing with a, a number of companies, correct me if I'm wrong, Thomas, that have basically sacked the sales force. Yes. Uh, and, and what they've done is that they've given the sales um, met, metric to, in effect, the customer service people. So what, what, what was an inbound call center, they're actually those people are actually now making outbound as well. Yes, but they're doing so in radically different ways. Right. So they're not, they're not emailing and they're not phoning. They're now online connecting um, on LinkedIn and on Facebook and on Messenger and on WhatsApp and through digital channels. And they're actually talking to people in real time. <laughs> it's an amazing process. And they're actually getting much better pickup from existing accounts. And these are large accounts. I'm not talking about somebody who's coming in to buy running shoes. I'm talking about large accounts making million dollar purchases online in real time with real people that they're talking to as they do so. So the whole sales process has shifted and most of these people are either existing and referred or they've come through contents that has driven them to the point where now they're engaging with these frontline people. And it's totally changed the way they're selling and their results are phenomenal compared to the kinds of people that we're talking about today that live in fear. Yeah, it's, it makes sense that that would be the case because the way in which um, people are, are the way in which we communicate in a networked economy is very different than the way we would communicate in an in the analog world, right? So in an analog world, it's all one to one, one to one, one to one. Whether it's phone or email, it's one to one. But when you're in a networked, it's not just one to many; it's many to many. Uh, the town square has returned, no. so that um, you know one person can go to that town square, say something, and everyone is then engaging about. Um, what happened, right? That's what we had before we had the telephone and it was one-to-one, -one, right? So we're back to that type of environment. So it makes sense that in a many-to-many omni-channel world, you could have one team that's doing both uh, servicing and, and getting new business from existing accounts, as well as engaging with um, with new customers. Um, and and that also may present an opportunity, right? Because those new customers are in the same town square with your existing customers, right? So. 100%. Yeah, very good point, Lionel. So and anything else that we've uh, picked up over this last week? Just, 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 uh, just tying tying the threads of that together again. I know we've pulled through a few of the Gartner things and all of that, but there's a there's a very profound statement in there. And from my previous experience in uh, in another field, there's a there's a there's a, a call, a flag that's gone up. And I just wonder, I wonder how many organisations have done this properly. The call from Gartner was to do a proper risk assessment. Of yeah, I know. A proper risk assessment. So if you were a management team and you really sat down and said, and I'm sure there's been financial risk assessments done, right? We've looked at EBITDA, we've looked at profitability, we've looked at what's in the bank and blah, 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 and we've done all of that. The resources. Have, and yeah. Have you sat down and done, I'm not talking about a half hour risk assessment on pipeline. I'm talking about a week's risk assessment offsite um, properly coming together to sit down and say, right, how we used to create, uh, generate demand, how we're how we're sourcing leads, how we're converting leads, properly unpacked all of that, analyzed every section of it, and then looked at the solutions for where we need to pull this through. And almost do almost do an investigation report on what we, where we're at now, the effect effectivity or the effectiveness of that today, efficacy and inefficiency of that today, and what needs to be done to move forward to the future. I wonder how many companies have put proper, proper focus on that risk assessment. And if Priscilla McKinney yeah, yeah. was here. Should probably say that there are many companies that are out of business business already and they don't know it yet. Yes. I think Very the irony point. with that is they, they don't feel like they have time to do that because <laughs> they've yeah. got to chase the sales, right? Right. But, right. But, but isn't there also the irony that, that so you're you're talking about, you know, and I completely agree with every word you said there, Eric. Uh, so they go off site, they they run their session and they look at all the different sessions and they look at demand generation and they say what's working uh and they they 
pull together a, a, a nice list of things that aren't working. So advertising doesn't work the way it used to work. Uh, email marketing doesn't work the way it used to work. Events don't work the way they used to work. Uh, what opportunities have, have we got? Uh, who can we get to speak? Ah, yeah, well, you're the marketing director, Thomas, so why don't you give us a... So the person that you're asking to solve the problem is the very person that created the problem in the first place, like the sales manager, you know, so or head of sales. How are we going to get people to sell more money? Well, we'll compensate them better. No, you yeah. won't compensate them better. They're not, that's not, that's not where the problem lies. The problem lies at the fact that they haven't got the tools they need to go out and, and the knowledge to actually go out and sell in the modern world. And the, the, and, and I think, Tim and I discussed this a while ago. You know, the problem is we're at this point now where when the marketing director turns up at the board table and says, the answer is social and here's why. Yeah. The chief exec says, so why are you bringing this to, be, to me now? Because I've been on LinkedIn for 15 years and you're telling me you've only just realized this now. Mm. And all of a sudden, you know, these, these these people have dug themselves into a hole and they can't get themselves out of that hole. They've got yeah. too much invested in doing it a particular way. Well, we need to move from email and marketing automation product A to product B because that's where the weak spot is. No, the weak spot is people don't open your emails. Yeah. Well, we're already all over social because we post something every day on our corporate feed. Yeah. And nobody engages with it except your own employees. You know, T Tim and I did a, a big competitor analysis for, for a new client of ours. And we looked at all of these different companies, social feeds, and all of them said exactly the same thing. Nobody cares about the brochures they're posting on their social channels. We, we did a, we did a, Alan and I did a little, um, it's only a sample of one with a, market, a, a marketing leader in a customer at the moment. They've just spent a whole load of money on an employee advocacy tool. So we said, tell you what, put some put some brochures out, see what you get. 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 Put something humanized, see what you get. And she's going, I got 7,000 views on the piece of humanized content. And what did you get on the other stuff? Oh, nothing at all. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's just, um, we need more of this stuff. We need more of this. <laughs> we need more humanized content. Right. So you need less brochures and yep. more humanized. Yes, yes, yes. Right. It's a simple experiment. Yeah. Very simple. That's really good. That's really good. And Adam, I'd say um, to, to go back to the Gartner study and based on what you were saying too, um, in, in my network, I see a lot of sales enablement is going to be the answer. And same thing, the sales enablement leader is fully committed to a sales enablement platform and tool because of the KPIs they get from it. But what most of the sales enablement solutions do is it just has another location where people on the team can share more brochure information with more people. And then we can track who comes in and who you know what they're doing but it's still the same process it's still the same thing we're sharing brochure information we're not we're not they're not getting people trained to effectively work where they need to work which is a different level in social with the building the relationships and, and what do you think that brand is brandon do you think that's what they're doing is that they don't know how to be digital and they're just hoping that there's going to be some sort of you know, the sales team are going to work it out and the sales enablement team are going to work. Or what is it that you think that is, is the problem? Yeah, and I think there's a couple of problems there. One is the, the, the sales enablement folks are just, you know, put their heels in with the sales enablement platform because two or three years ago, they had to fight like hell to get it. Yeah. Right. And they got to save face. But the other thing I see with companies is there's there's nobody on the team that is really aware or fighting for this, this part of engagement and relationship building that needs to take place. This goes back to Tim, when, when you and I were on Tim talk last week and you asked me about being laughed at, um, when you talk about relationship building and sales, you talk about connecting with people and in an analog world of the world I came from, it was all about, Brandon, your, your job in, in my first job out of grad school in sales was your job to be known, like, and trusted. 
once you do that, then you got the rest of the team that can help you with the sales process. And when you talk about that in enterprise worlds, you say, oh, feelings and likability and all that, they want to throw it out the door. But it's the foundation of every good deal I've ever done. It's probably the foundation of every good deal you guys have done. Strong relationships bring strong sales and they bring referral or uh, renewals, right? And I, I've got a customer right now, they're, they're just dying on referrals. It's like, well, when you don't have relationships with your customers, that renewal is really, really hard. Sorry, I said referrals, I meant renewals. So anyway. Mike's yeah, not here, so, no, um, sorry. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about Mike because he's sick. So the word referral is, is just yeah, he sends out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, um, Get well soon. Get well I, soon. I, I, the, I think that, um, I mean, all, these points are actually all related, which is like who, who is going to be the person who is in the C-suite that holds the CMO to account? Who is going to be that person? I, 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 I think I'm not, this is where I'm betting my money. I think the ally is the CFO. I think the CFO uh, expanding their role a little bit more and really getting after the CMO on attribution, like ROI on the money that's coming in. Um, I think the CFO is the person that's going to um, also because they, you know, they are responsible for the time, you know, the board will listen to the CFO. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're the, you know, and, um, and that was one of the things that the that, that Gartner talked about, which is about having data driven sales. Yeah. And actually looking at some of the leading indicators, which you funnily can get from from social, but you can't get from the analog world. And and actually going to the CFO and saying, this is how the business or where the business is going. We know that because we can see this from the conversations that, we have, that we're having from the sales teams. It's not from the hopes and dreams that we have in CRM. It's from actual things that are happening or not happening <laughs> out there on social land. Rather than when usually what happens is the CFO goes to the, the, the head of sales and says, so how's it going? It's, oh, yeah, it's brilliant. Oh, yeah, we're knocking it out of the park. We're knocking it out of the park. And it's like, so where so where are the deals? You know, where... where you know, the, the, where's the pipeline? But but it all starts from the CMO, doesn't it? <clears throat> so when the CMO commissions a campaign and the, they say that the purpose of the campaign is to raise awareness, you know, we should be sending chief executives a set of boxing gloves that they can punch a CMO every time the CMO says, let's raise awareness of our product. We'll, we'll get letters about that, uh, Adam. Yes. Good. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm more than happy to have that conversation because, you know, from 1990, you know, from <laughs> yeah, because it, it's just utterly vacuous, isn't it? Well, well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to post stuff. It's going to these banner ads are going to show up on your in your timeline and your newsfeed and in these various places. You, and then you'll recognize my brand. You know, five pounds to anybody that can tell me the last banner ad they saw. You know, hello. No, there's nothing coming back because actually we all it's wallpaper. We ignore yeah. this rubbish. I just I just I'm just amazed that Friday the thirteenth forevermore is going to be international punch a CMO day. It's all gone <laughs> the audience has all gone quiet. So everyone left. Yeah. Everyone left. Yeah. Oh, too dodgy, too dodgy. <laughs> I think I think um, it's just, a metaphor, I mean, by the way, everybody. Yes, yeah, so no, it was a bit of fun. No CMOs fun. were hurt in the <laughs> <No. early campaign. laughs> As yet, yes, not, not yet. Anyway, oh man, uh, this guy told me I mean, on a restream that I should punch you. Um, <laughs> the, it, it's Friday the thirteenth. I mean, why not make it a, a, yeah. a national day? Yeah. yeah, I think I Sorry, think I think that the CFO right is someone that can be an ally, that um, can be empowered with some new information, and can um, in 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 as all the roles are changing, right in the in the C-suite, um, and we we hopefully are moving to a more uh, collaborative environment that. Um, really they're the only person that can hold that cmo to your point. i would i would add to that though lenwood yeah i don't disagree uh, i think yeah. that's uh, and they have a lot of power 
They don't often use it, but they do have a lot of power. Uh, I would say the other important person, this is a big change, is the CIO yeah, or the CTO. Well, they're right? used to being data-driven, right? But that's what that's what Gartner talked about, as uh, to Tim's point, mm -hmm. data is now being seen as the the vein of gold that everybody's been ignoring, right? And that the wonderful thing about digital and social is there is so much data coming at you in real time if you care to look, that you can actually go in there and make great decisions. As you know, as Eric was alluding to earlier, if you're not analyzing the risk from the data and the opportunities from the data, what are you doing? Is it a crystal ball at the end of your desk you're looking at? <laughs> who, who, was it that said, who was it that said, without data, you're just someone else with an opinion? Yeah. And, but, but you know, you, you can even make the wrong decisions, Thomas. But the point is yes. you're making the decisions for the right reasons. And what we see is, you know, we see, in, or I see increasingly is people that are, are making decisions based on what they hope is happening. Yes. You know, we're going to put this brochure out there and it's a really good brochure. We've designed it beautifully. It's got some lovely photography in it and that will make the phone ring. You hope it'll make the phone ring and you can't base a business on hope. But, but to, they're, to, to they're, also used, they're also used to looking at the wrong <laughs> data, I think. I think they, they do believe, there's a lot of they believe we are data driven but they're still so focused on this data, they haven't picked their head up to look at other data that would give them different answers. And so they just keep trying harder. But at the beginning of this call, Len would said something about uh, culture. <clears throat> and and I, I think that, that the big challenge for organizations to transform is around a culture of actually, because of the transparency of digital and the transparency particularly of social, while we continue to say that you're a salesperson, your job is to go and sell stuff, that's the wrong culture. You, you, you are somebody, and selling is a byproduct of what you do. What you do is helping customers. And yeah. when you see yourself as a yeah. customer helper, then mm -hmm. the sale is easy. They want to buy from you, and the renewal is easy because you're, they're buying it for the right reasons, and you have solved their specific problem. So everybody that says... I'm an overachieving, super successful salesman and I always make my quota. Actually, that demonstrates you're focusing on the wrong thing. Make the customer happy. The customer never leaves. And, you know, great examples of companies that get this right are Google. You know, they say uh, they, they make the best email service in the world. And it has to be the best email service in the world because it's free. And if it's free, you've got nothing invested in it. And therefore, you can just drop it and go somewhere else. But you don't because Gmail is the best email service. And then off the back of you being embedded in that, that's where they make their money. So if you genuinely try to solve the customer's problem, the customer will buy from you and they will keep buying from you. But, but it's this kind of changing what we view as being the roles for this new digital world. Because if you sell stuff to people that they don't want in order to make your number, social enables everybody in the world to hear exactly how you've behaved. And that's the end of your career and the end of your company. I love that. Imagine asking yeah. someone what they did for a living and they said, uh, I'm a uh, delight to my customers. Yeah. Well, that's someone you'd want to have a conversation with as well, yeah. wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Eric. I'm well known for delighting my customers. I'd like to have a chat with you, please, about how I can delight you. You're much more likely to take that call than I'm a really successful salesman. Eric. Can I talk to you about what I can sell you, please? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, great I'm, not sure, great I'm not sure how the word delight is completely translated in, in the UK, but I think if I said I delight my customers, I might have to... Uh, uh, look, for a new, look for a new industry. It, maybe, maybe an industry where you had to have a, a haircut like this. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'd have to create an OnlyFans account or something. So, it, right, and, and another, your, another your, OnlyFans your, account. Another. Account. <laughs> yeah, your your point is spot on. I just would need the just, semantic change there to yeah, pull that off. Yeah, loud and clear, yeah. Brandon. Gotcha. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. But there is a dilemma, isn't there? Um, if, if, if I'm a company that, that agrees with everything that we, we've talked about, and so I now come to the, the grandiose realization that I need to make these changes, and I want to hire people in that light, is it fair to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, 
there aren't many of those people out there. So if that's true, and I'm going to have a hard time doing that, then what are my options? You, well, you've either got to buy or grow your own, haven't you? Yes. But, but either way, you know, uh, if you create a company culture which says, uh, we want you to be active on social, we want you to have a great profile that reflects well on the company, however, you've got to make 100 calls a day, then, uh, then, then it, it's like trying to get a little bit pregnant, isn't it? You know, it, it's not actually possible to, to, to achieve that outcome. So what you need to do is you need to remap how the company works, remap what the, the, the roles and responsibilities of people are and demonstrate to them that this is a learning journey. You know, you're not, you're not going to get it right all of the time, but the future lies that way. And we can either keep you paying you 40K a year base we can keep you at that price and retrain you to be that person. Or we can hire in somebody that's five times that price. And as a company, we have to make a decision about which of those we're going to do. But you're right. Those people are few and far between. But it, it needs the change, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But, but what, doesn't what that change just... happen? Sorry, go ahead. That's right, Thomas. No, you go ahead, Brian. I was going to say, what if, I mean, even just increment, I'm always looking at the incremental steps, right? We know that this is, there's a lot of fear of change in little incremental steps. What if even we just change like a hundred phone calls a day to a hundred touches a day and you're able to incorporate social as a touch that is, you know, it's strategic, it's effective. It, you could even document in CRM but it's not a phone call that's really just a waste of time and honestly going to burn out your team and make them quit and go to another company anyway. I don't know how touch transfers in America in I, terms yeah, of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> as, as soon as touch came out, I caught the light and I went... A oh, touchies. here it comes again! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Nick, oh I'm going to send you... I, I saw Nick's comment. I'll send you a link to my uh, OnlyFans account. I'll get that there for you. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you how to do the touches. Um, anyway. <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> hey, Tim, I'm glad your mom's not here for this part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that's a good job. Exactly. Yeah. I, um, um, I think those two comments go together, what Adam said and what Brandon said, right? Because what Adam said is this is a learning process. It's not all going to happen overnight, but we got to get going and going in that direction. And I think what Brandon is saying is, is also true that we need to just get the, start building that digital skill. We got to start building that digital skill and um, doing more um, – every day or doing just getting into the habit of doing it every day so that it becomes the primary thing that you do. Uh, I really, you know, even in my own, in my own skills development journey, you know, if you had told me a year and a half ago that I would have the articles that I have on LinkedIn now, the posts, I would have said, I can't do it. There's no way. Right. But I started, I learned, <laughs> Bye. There should be apostrophe uh, after that. yeah. That's so funny. Thanks, um, Yeah. So, so, um, so you know, once you get started and you get going and you keep going and you have a team of people that are around you that are also doing it. Um, people are being supportive of one another. You're getting some coaching. Um, what, what you look like, um, you know, in 12 to 18 months will be very different. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But you know what I would, what I would add to that guys. And this is, this is to me, the single most important thing that I've really come to realize in the last little while. And that is that, Training the sales team is great. Training the marketing team is great. But if you don't train that CEO and that leadership team, it's useless. You have to start with the leadership, the executive, and, this, and it starts with the CEO. And if it doesn't run downstream, it doesn't run. Forget about it. It's I that agree simple. With that 100%. So how, See, how does that work it, then when you're talking about a company like – I don't know, IBM or EY or Oracle, it's got 200,000 staff. You know, these people are not accessible. 
And these are the companies where the impact of one of those companies going under because they fail to remain relevant to their customers is enormous. It's enormous on the economy. It's enormous on 200,000 people that work within the company that have lost their job. It's, it's the, you know, the ecosystem of, of providers and, and partners. Uh, so how, how, do, how does one access those people for that kind of lapel gripping kind of conversation that needs to take place? It's easy with a small company. It's almost impossible with a large company. So how does how do we access those people in the same way we're talking about with everybody else? The nice thing is those people are, you know, 15 years on LinkedIn or on some other digital channel. You can reach them in, in real time on social media and you can give them examples of Maersk and other large enterprise level companies. And Eric, you've got many and we've all got we've all got examples where the CEO has become part of the solution as opposed to signing a check for something else and hoping it works for him or her, right? So there is a way to reach them and, and it is online in the digital world through social. There's no question about it. Uh, and that's where all the other CEOs that are worth paying attention to are anyway. Yeah, right? there are so, CEOs right. that are active on social media, right? We've yeah, had Bruce Mason from Nemos in, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you, and you look at some of the... Um, the growth of companies where the CEO or somebody else at the C level have taken on more of that evangelist role. And I know there's, you know, it's in a, a bit of an ubiquitous term these days, but the one that is very active on social and doing it well, they're not just spouting out the brochure information, but they're really adding value, the exposure for the company, and then the exposure for all the sales team and customer success who's reaching out to other people because the CEO has such great exposure, it, it filters down and helps everybody else connect and get people into conversation quicker, whether that is phone calls or emails or social, whatever. But that social yeah. presence is just so, so important for the C-suite. Yeah, so I was it'd having- be, It'd be kind of tough to, to work at BP and be asked to get involved in social and say, why should I? When Bernard Looney's when leading Bernard the judge. When Bernard Looney is yeah. the CEO's on it. It'd be kind of difficult to work at Shell when Ben Van Buren is the, the CEO of Shell Global is making videos on LinkedIn and short form text posts. And then you saying, well, I don't really have time. Well, Ben kind of <laughs> does. All right. Maybe he's got a team around him to support him. Um, but uh, but they're, they're there. And that C-suite is looking at their CEO going, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, this is a this is sort of related, but I don't know. I'll just say it. Um, but, you know, in thinking about how we reimagine um, space and how we're using space, you know, I think some of these larger organizations, they have like studios now where their CEOs can go or anyone can go and create this live content and stream it out on social media. And I think that as we're reimagining the use of space and why people and what people need in those spaces, like having space where, you know, let's even if it's a co working space where people can access a studio and can use it for live streams on social media is a great reimagining of space for what we need to do today which is create content and and be live and do those things. Like I would like to, I mean, I, that would be a draw for me, actually, I'm saying to, uh, for a co-working facility, a co-working facility that had a space or multiple spaces that I could use for creating content, a studio, those kinds of things. It was, hey, um, so very well said. It was Chris Fleming, the CEO at Cyberhawk, that said that um, while they're a, um, a drones company, they're also a media, a, a media company as well. Social media yeah. company, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So going back to Thomas's question. Lenwood, I are... think... Sorry, Brandon, carry on. No, no, no. I was just say, Lenwood, you, I think you, um, there's a business model right there for somebody listening. Run with that. Yeah. I mean, all those, <laughs> all those co-working spaces, if you mm -hmm. plop something in that you could schedule or pop in and go, can I go live or could you record this for me or help? I think it'd be tremendous. Sorry, mm -hmm. Eric. No, so just getting back to Tom, Thomas's original question, when we're interviewing for those modern salespeople, 
quite funny questions coming in now that are new in this modern world. You know, like, so thanks for coming today. Um, you're interested in this uh, sales director's <laughs> job. Yeah. Do you have a podcast? Yeah. What? What? Do I have a what? <laughs> right. do, you, do you have a pod? Or, okay, so you don't have a podcast. When was the last time you were on one? Hmm. Um, do you do LinkedIn Lives? Um, sorry, I, I'm, I'm here for the sales director's job. Yeah, when was the last article you wrote? Yeah. Why have you only written one article in a year? Hmm. How valuable is your network and how big is it? Hmm. And is it in the sectors that we are interested in, your hmm. digital network? Sorry, I'm here for the sales director's job. I, I don't know what all this is about. What are you asking me about? The size of my digital network? Well, why, you why have you only got 500 connections on uh, LinkedIn? Yeah, yeah. how active? Can... For, um, uh, 20 years. Yeah, yeah. What, do you have a Twitter account? You, we couldn't find you on Twitter. Or we did find you Eric, on Twitter, and it's really, really dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> why the hat in the glasses? Yeah, and, uh, and, <laughs> yeah we, we, we found that. We found your Facebook account as well. You know, come on. <laughs> Let's Man, make better Eric. decisions. <laughs> it's my blog. It's my blog for next week. Is this this new interview for salespeople? Uh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric, that was awesome. That Eric, was really... that was right on. Yeah, <laughs> I just I just love that question. So so thanks th thanks for coming today. Do you have a sales podcast? Uh, I love it. That was so. It, good. It's probably uh, just to give some context, Eric. It's probably worth mentioning. <laughs> Because some people watching this may say, well, well, podcast, really? Why would I have that? Oh. Do, you know, do you know how many CEO meetings you can get? <laughs> Senior level meetings with people by having a podcast. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. It and, al is and also, insane. Hi, I really love your uh, business. I love the way that you guys are working. I'd love to have you on a podcast. It'll be 30 minutes of your time. It'd be really cool. They come on the podcast, you make a new friend a new digital friend, and all of that person's organization and that whole network goes, okay, they like them, they're all together, so suddenly you get access to a massive new organization of people and your network starts, starts to enrich and grow. And it is, quite honestly, you know, if I, I, I'll put it out here right now. If I hadn't started the podcast with Crux last year, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in today. No, I agree. No way, no way. Yeah. Yeah. I know and, that was and, a, and, you know, and the podcast for you has actually led to, to other yeah. things. Oh, yeah. But what what the the what podcasts g give you as a salesperson is access at the highest level in an organization. I know Brandon, you've got a podcast as well, and and you know, yeah. And our our episode with you is going to publish next week. Wow! There you go. Yeah, yeah. Just a slight plug for Social Your Sales podcast, but just, the just Social just Your Sales podcast by. That's it. Brandon, and, yeah, and Eric with Excellent. a K. And Eric with Eric Coldo, Eric with a K. Hey, before we wrap up, can I point out that uh, Lenwin and Tim obviously didn't see the memo that uh, Thomas and I are in green, Eric and Adam are in gray, and Lenwin and Tim, like, come on. Oh, what, yeah, what, so what I should have worn a green shirt or he should have worn a white one. <laughs> Either way would have worked. It just it just hurt us. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, this is the this is the last digital download for two weeks. Um, I should have maybe said we brought some games in or something like that and played <laughs> Cluedo or Snakes and Ladders or something like that. I need to go surfing. Yeah, um, uh, but we will be back in September. Oh, two weeks. Two weeks off. Hmm. Wow. Two weeks off. What are we going to do? Well, what will you do on Fridays in the in the morning um, before the digital download? Crikey! Be in September. Awesome. <laughs> and unfortunately, my mum won't be there. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe she will. Or maybe she M will. Maybe. Another square on the digital download. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Hey, you I think today was question. awesome. <laughs> you know she's watching, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll be in trouble now, Tim. You'll be yeah. standing in the corner for the I'll rest have to, of the day. I'll have to be in bed by eight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if she's listening, I hope she comes uh, comes back in and uh, gives you a little smack on the head before we. Oh, yeah, I'd love it. I'd love it. Yeah. I'd love it again. Yeah. Come on, Mrs. Hughes. Come yeah, on. Come on. Yeah. You, I can, she's and, not, and not as well. fast as she used to be. Yeah, we can wait. We can wait. We can wait with all day. 
Yeah, but <laughs> all day. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna go get a sandwich and hang around and see what happens. Thanks everybody. She, she's not coming. <laughs> she's not coming. She's not taking a bite. Okay. Thanks. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for all the comments. Thanks. Thanks. Have a great two weeks. Yeah. We'll see you.